Welcome along to the fourth part of our video series where we're learning how to create an endless runner game using Python code. In the previous three videos, we got as far as this. We've got our background sorted and we've got our main character in the game now. She's all animated. She can jump. She's looking good. Next thing we're going to be doing is bringing in a collectible item, which is going to be a ghost that flies across the screen, not too far above the zombie's head. Okay, so to get started on bringing this ghost in the game, have a look in your images folder. Here it is here, the ghost. It's called ghost, funnily enough. We need to bring it in first of all. So at the top section of your code, let's create a variable called ghost and set that to actor and in brackets and quotation marks, ghost. So that ghost image is attached to your ghost variable. Next thing you want to do is set up some coordinates for where this ghost is going to appear. To start with, I just want it to appear in the middle of the screen to make sure it is working. So on the x-axis, I'm going to put it at 400, and then on the y-axis, I'm going to set it to, let's say, 250. Now I'm just going to go down the bottom of the page into the draw function and draw that ghost onto the screen. So ghost.draw, open and close a set of brackets, and that will draw your ghost in the middle of the screen, hopefully. Let's have a look. Okay, there it is. And now our zombie can jump up and still reach that, so that's not a bad height. I probably wouldn't go any higher than that. So what I want the ghost to do is I want it to start off the side of the page here somewhere and then fly across the screen. Once it hits this left-hand edge, it will just loop back around over to the right-hand side here somewhere and then fly back through again. I want it appearing at random times and at slightly different heights as well. So it's not always this high. We could always make it a little bit lower so the zombie doesn't have to jump as high to collect it. Um, so let's get started on randomizing it when it comes across the page. Back up the top here where we just set up the ghost actor, we're going to change the X and the Y values. Okay, I'm going to make them random. So I'm going to call up the random uh, module and pull out the rand int or the random integer function from inside there. So on the X axis, we can get it to start at about, say, 900 uh, pixels, which is just off to the right hand side of the page. Or it could go all the way up to 5,000, which is way off to the right-hand side of the page. It needs to start somewhere between those two numbers. And for the Y value, same sort of deal, random.randint. So we're going to choose another random uh, position for the Y value. Not much of a random position, though. Not as much of a random position as last, the last one. It'll be 250 to 350. Okay, so just it'll vary its height a little bit as it comes across our page. All right, so, now, so when we play that game now, we won't see the ghost anymore because it's starting somewhere off to the right-hand side of the page. What we want to do now is make it um, fly across the page so we can actually see it again. Okay, so let's go back to our update function now. Just go beneath um, the bat we drew up before. Maybe delete a bit of that empty space that we don't need. I'm going to put in a comment that says ghost. And first of all, let's get it moving across the screen. So ghost.x. And we'll set that equal to uh, ghost.x minus 5. Um, let's test it. I think that will get it moving. Okay, so it does start off the right hand side of the screen somewhere, anywhere between 900 and 5000 pixels. Flies across the screen. And that's as far as he goes so far. He's just going to keep flying to the left there, somewhere off in the unknowns of our game. What we want to get him to do now is stop um, moving when he hits that left-hand edge of the page and then go back to the right-hand side and fly back across. Before I do that, I might just tidy up this bit of code here. Uh, remember, we can shorten this. So instead of ghost.x equals ghost.x minus 5, let's make it ghost.x minus equals 5. It just shortens the code. I actually think we did that, yeah, up here. We could have fixed this up in the previous video, which I didn't. So let's do that quickly now. Where we've got zombie.y equals zombie.y plus velocity, change it. Zombie.y plus equals velocity. And for velocity equals velocity plus gravity, velocity plus equals gravity. Just a better way to write your code. Anyway, that was something we should have done in the last video. Back down here to the ghost now. 
So we've got our ghosts moving across the page. The next thing we are going to do, um, as I said, is if it hits that left-hand edge or just past it, then we want to return it to the right-hand side of the page. So if our ghost.x is less than, say, minus 50, that's just off the left-hand side of our page, then we'll change its coordinates. Oops, ghost.x and ghost.y will be equal to what we had up the top before, just those random um, integers. Where is it? These ones here. I'll probably copy and paste those two lines actually, so I'll just copy and paste them from there. So it'll be ghost.x equals random integer somewhere between 900 and 5000 again. It's back to where it started. And the y will be anywhere between 250 and 350 pixels. Let's give that a test run. Okay, so we'll just have to wait a moment for our ghost to come across the screen. No doubt this will take forever while I'm testing it. Okay, so when it hits minus 50, which is probably just off to the left-hand side of the screen here, it should flick back around to a random location over on the right and then fly back across the screen very shortly. So just give it a moment and hopefully you'll see another ghost. There it is. So our ghost is working nicely. What we want to do now is um, get some points when we hit that ghost. Okay, so I might put in, I think we put in a few comments here. Move the ghost across the screen. Is that one? And this if statement is when the ghost hits the left side of the screen, move it back over to the right to fly across again. All right, so let's put in another comment here that just says when the zombie and the ghost collide. Okay, so when they collide, what we want to do is basically this again. We want the ghost to disappear off the right-hand side somewhere and eventually fly back across. But not only that, we also want to play a sound um, and we also want to give ourselves a score. So let's um, start with the sounds, I reckon. So we'll do a... Do an if statement. If our zombie dot collide rect, and then in brackets, what's it colliding with? It's colliding with the ghost. So if our zombie collides with the ghost, put a colon. What do we want it to do? First of all, sounds. In my sounds folder here, I've got a sound called collect. We're collecting the ghost basically, so let's bring that in. So it's sounds dot collect dot play. I'll just play a little beep sound to show we've collected the ghost and earned ourselves some points. Um, from there, once we've played that sound, we want to reset the ghost's position off to the right-hand side of the page. So copy and paste those two lines back in to move it off to the right-hand side somewhere. Uh, we won't worry about the score just yet. That's coming in a moment. Let's just test this out to make sure we can collect the zombie and hear a little sound. Okay, hopefully it won't take too long to come across the screen. Here we go. Okay, that looks good, so that's working well. And another zombie, oh sorry, another ghost would come out. And there we go, and do the same thing. So that's working well. Now to get this score working, we're going to need to go back up the top here, outside the update function. And I better put in a comment that says create game variables. And we'll make a variable called score and set it to zero. Okay, when the game starts, our score will be set to zero. Now when the ghost and the zombie collide, we want to get five points. So we just write score equals score plus five. Takes our current score and adds five to it. A better way to write that would be score plus equals five. Um, we could test that now, but we don't have the score actually drawn up on the screen yet. And Watch the error we get here. You should be starting to get used to some of these errors. Just wait for me to hit a ghost and you'll see the error that I get. Okay, it says we've got a local variable score reference before assignment. That just means we need to make this variable score a global variable. Okay, so up here we've got global velocity. Stick a comma after that and we're going to write score. That means we can now update the score inside this function. We can access it here. And we can access it down here now. Okay, so when we hit the ghost, we will get five points now. Let's display that score on the screen. So I need you to go down the bottom section to the draw bit. Okay, 
Um, so we probably need to pick some colors first of all. So back up the top. I'm not going to use black or brown for my scoreboard. I'm going to use white, I think, or maybe even red. I don't know. Let's put them both in. So I'm going to use them both. So white equals and red equals. Now remember, you use the RGB color picker to choose our colors. Um, so if I just search RGB oops, color picker, this is a great um, little feature in Google where you can just go and click on a color and it will give you the RGB code that you need to code up particular colors. So for the red color I want to use today, it's going to be 212, 47,47. And for white it's just 255, 255, 255. And we're going to use those two colors in our scoreboard and our game over screen. That's why I just did both of them now. Alright, so heading back down towards the bottom in the draw section. Uh, what we need to do... Actually, I don't need to put it down there. Oops. Put it right at the bottom after ghost.draw. Remember to write on the screen, we need to do screen.draw.text. And in quotation marks and brackets, I'm going to write score, put a colon, and a space and then close those quotation marks up. I'm then going to write plus str and then score in another set of brackets. Okay, what that does is it displays the word score on my screen and then next to that it attaches my actual score which is a number but it's converting that number into a string of characters so I recognize it as letters or numbers this time around. Just saves an error coming up in Python, okay. After that, we need to set the coordinates for where we want this scoreboard to go. So I just want it a little bit in from the left, so 20 across and 20 down from the top of the page. Would be a good set of coordinates. I'm then going to choose the color. So I'm going to write color equals, and then in brackets, I'm going to write red. That is just accessing that red variable that I created up the top and inserting those numbers in so it knows that I want to color it in red. I'll put a comma and I'm going to change the font name to look in our fonts folder. We got a new font for this game called Creepster. It's kind of a horror looking font, so let's put that in there. And finally, the font size is going to be equal to 30. And we'll close off the brackets there for that. So it's a long one, but on the screen, we're going to draw some text. And inside of brackets, we write the score, our coordinates, X and Y, what color we want to use, what font we want to use, and what size that font is going to be. Um, we can probably give that a test run and we'll see if we have our scoreboard pop up. No, nope, we've got an error because I forgot to put in a comma after Creepster. My mistake. There it is. So we've got our scoreboard up there now. So let's collect a ghost and see if we can get five points. Okay, that's working well. Sounds good. The ghost disappears as soon as we hit it. We get five points. I'll just test one more ghost. Hopefully it won't take too long to come out. There we go. And that just goes up by another five points. So that is working quite well. Um, that's probably all we need to do in this video. So we've got the ghost working. We've got the scoreboard working well. We haven't got too much to go. In the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some obstacles in. So I've got these little spikes that are going to come across the screen, and it's the zombie's job to jump over them and not get hit by them. Okay, so I will catch you in that next video where we start making obstacles.